Thank you for joining me. Uh, this time we're going to be talking a little bit about Hohmann transfers, which, uh, for those not in the know, is a method for moving from one circular orbit to another, and you only have to worry about the gravitational influence of one central body. In this case, we'll be saying the Earth, but it doesn't particular matter uh, which one. Uh, why is this useful? Well, let's imagine that you are Steve here, stuck in a circular orbit, uh, and you want to get to another thing uh, over here, which is in a different circular orbit at uh, a different uh, radius from whichever central body you are uh, orbiting. Uh, sorry, it's at a different distance from the planet than you are. Um, and the Hohmann transfer enables you to travel from uh, wherever you started to wherever you're going with the minimum amount of fuel required by taking advantage of the Oberth effect, which states uh, that any maneuver you take is going to be the most efficient whenever you are either at your closest or farthest point from the planet. Uh, this is due to Newton's laws and uh, how conservation of potential energy works uh, when dealing with orbital motion. Uh, that's a little bit beyond the scope of this particular video. Um, but the method by which it works is called the Vis Viva equation, which lets you take uh, any, uh, excuse me, it lets you take any radius from the planet uh, in a circular orbit and tells you exactly how fast you need to be going to stay at that orbit. Uh, <clears throat> it also enables you to figure out exactly how fast you need to be going at either this point or this point uh, to enter any uh, elliptical orbit as well. Um, so really it's just a method for finding your uh, radius from the planet if you know your velocity and the shape of your orbit or for finding your velocity if you know your radius and the shape of your orbit. Um, so the method by which this works, we'll, we'll break it down here real quick. Um, the vis viva equation states that your velocity squared, your tangential velocity squared, uh, is equal to uh, this parameter mu, and mu just equals Newton's gravitational constant, big G, times the mass of whatever it is that you're orbiting, assuming that you are very small in comparison, like a satellite or a person or a giant rocket. Uh, you plug in this parameter mu, uh, which is sometimes called the standard gravitational parameter, and you multiply it by 2 divided by your radius, which is your current distance from the planet at any given time, wherever you want to know this information. Uh, subtract 1 over a, and a is the semi-major axis of the transfer orbit you are going to take. Um, if you are trying to enter a circular orbit, uh, the semi-major axis and the radius are the same. So if you just want to know how fast you need to go to be in a circular orbit at any given distance, uh, then all you need to find is uh, the square root of mu times 1 over the radius. Uh, and you're done. You know exactly how fast you need to go to be at any distance from the planet in a perfectly circular orbit. Excuse me. Um, if you know your radius and you want to know your velocity, uh, I'm sorry, if you know your velocity and you want to know your radius, you just run it backwards, um, but we don't really need to do that here. Um, so now we want to find this transfer orbit. So we're going from the red one to the blue one, uh, and we need to know how fast we need to 
be to take this green path around here uh, so that we can arrive at the correct radius on the opposite side of the planet. The deal with Hohmann transfers is that you, whenever you take your maneuver in a circular orbit, wherever you wind up will always be on exactly the opposite side of the planet from wherever you started. Um, and in order to find uh, the speed v, sorry, v, that you need, excuse me, Control my tools. So if you're trying to find this speed V that you need to be going to take this path from red to blue along the green line, uh, you need to do the same equation, but now you're finding the square root of the parameter uh, mu times 2 over the red radius, your starting radius minus 1 over the semi-major axis of the green orbit. And in order to find that, you just take the red radius and the blue radius, and you add them together, and you divide the result by 2. This gives you the average radius between the two orbits, which just happens to wind up being the semi-major axis of the green orbit. Uh, I say it just happens to. There are reasons don't worry about it. Uh, we'll, we can get to that at a later date. Um, so now having found V, uh, you take your red V, uh, your starting velocity, um, and you take, excuse me, we'll do this. So your st the velocity, the maneuver you need to take winds up being V, green V, minus red V, and that winds up being your maneuver speed, how fast you need to speed up or slow down to go from your starting velocity to your transfer velocity. And now having had your transfer velocity, you just wait until you reach, you wait until you go around and reach this blue point. Having reached this blue point, you take your, uh, your same thing, but now instead of running it for red R, you're running for blue R, your final radius. So you take the same information, you plug in this, that tells you how fast you need to be going to go at uh, the speed required to stay in this circular orbit, your, your final orbit, blue orbit, and having now found blue V, oh man, losing control of my tools yet again. Having now found Right. Having now found blue V, you now need to take blue V minus green V again to get your maneuver for your inner orbit. Um, but there's a catch because this green number uh, for the green velocity is different. Now you need to take the radius at this point because it's an elliptical orbit. It has two different uh, distances from where you start to where you finish. So now you just need to do this, uh, but plug in the value for your final orbit, and there you go. You're golden. Um, and so the question is, what does this look like in practice? Uh, and that's the real purpose of this video, is that I've made this program, um, which enables you to visualize dynamically switching between two different orbits. So we start at the red place, we're going to the green place. I'm sorry I used different colors. 
um, and the little green blip just takes this path. It utilizes the least amount of fuel required in order to get there um, by taking advantage of, again, the Oberth effect, which states that thrusting at exactly this point and this point is far more efficient than doing it anywhere else because of the interaction between uh, this green blip and gravity. Um, now we can go from a small orbit to a big orbit, from a big orbit to a bigger orbit, um, if we want to do that. But actually, and then we can go from a big orbit to a small orbit. Uh, one of the issues with the Hellman transfer you may notice is that it is quite slow. That is the price for your fuel efficiency. Um, and it is not always the most fuel efficient thing. It is only always the most fuel efficient thing whenever you're dealing with one central body, in this case, the blue ball Earth. Uh, anyway. Uh, that's all you need to know about home and transfers. If you want to know how this particular program works, uh, there is a follow-up or perhaps sister video uh, I will be uploading alongside this that breaks down exactly how this works. Uh, thanks again. If you enjoyed this video, if you now know more about space than you did before, please like and subscribe. Have a good day.